Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021 and I'm playing around with a sunset and I thought this was a good example of how the masking tools can really help you customize the look of an image because this uh, this photo is a long exposure. Well, let me just show you. Here we go. Long exposure taken in Italy a number of years ago when we could get on planes and do things like go to Italy. And I really like it, but some of the colors kind of washed out because it is a long exposure. I want to bring back some of the color. I want to rearrange the light a little bit. I want to add a little bit of a pop to the detail in the buildings and things like that. That's where their masking tools come in really handy because the masking here in on one is frankly just unreal i've done a couple of recent videos you can find in that playlist one about the ai quick mask and one about the perfect brush both of which i'm going to use here so i'm gonna go ahead and get started i'm going to add a little bit of contrast i like to generally start on the develop tab and do a few things here in tone and color before i jump over to effects so i'm doing that now I am going to pull the highlights down, uh, something about like that. They're a little bit too bright. And I'm going to warm up the temperature uh, a little bit as well. I want to get a little bit more of that temperature and tint to bring back kind of that sunset color. And I just like that magenta tint on sunset simply because I think it looks good. But, uh, you know, I haven't done much. And if you, um, it's also got the lens correction in there. So you can see that kind of changing the sort of the bend in the center there if you want. But anyway, there's the before. And there it is now. A little bit warmer, a little bit more exciting, but... I'm going to go have some fun. The first thing I'm going to do in uh, the uh, effects tab is grab dynamic contrast. And this is a great tool. I've been using this quite a bit. I'm going to give it about a seven or eight here on small. I think 15 and 20 on large is fine. What I want to do is just kind of pop the detail, the appearance of detail there across the buildings. And so this is where the perfect brush comes in really handy. I'm in the masking window. I'm going to click invert simply because I prefer there to be nothing and then I paint it in. So just make sure when you do that that you're in paint in mode, which I am. There's my brush, the perfect brush. You can see that's uh, already selected. And all I'm going to do is just paint over the uh, buildings. Okay, here we go. Just kind of painted over that. Let me show you the mask view. Turn that on and you can see that that is um, a pretty awesome brush. Even though I was kind of going over things by a wide margin, it's pretty accurate around a lot of those areas. I'm going to click paint out. I'm going to get it out of the sun there a little bit. But I think generally speaking, that looks fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and click view again. And all I've done is stick that dynamic contrast in those areas. And I'm going to use that mask again. So I'm going to click on copy. And now I'm going to go get HDR look and add a little bit more crunch to those areas as well. I think the default settings are just fine. So I'm just going to click in the masking menu and click paste. And once again, if I click on view, you can see where this HDR look filter is applying across the image. In other words, um, if you're familiar with masking, white reveals black conceals, right? So you're getting where the white is, you're getting the full effect of the uh, HDR look filter. I'm going to go ahead and close that. If I turn this off, there it is a little bit darker, a little bit less um, crunchy, for lack of a better word. I kind of like using the HDR look, especially on man-made structures or like maybe a mountainous, rocky landscape, something like that. So already we've gone from that photo to that photo, and this is looking warmer. It looks more sunsetty, and I've definitely got a bit more pop in the buildings. Now I want to do some things on the sky and the water, and that's what's so great, again, about the brush masking uh, and the masking capabilities here is just that they're very intelligent and useful. So I'm going to click on add filter. I'm going to get noise reduction. And again, this is something I do a lot. I'm just going to go like, you know, 75, something like that. And I'm going to paste it once again, but this time I want to invert it. So if I click on view, all I've done is applied that heavy noise reduction to the sky and the water. And this is something I do a lot simply because I kind of like smooth skies and smooth water, which is another reason I like long exposures of which this is one. So if I turn this off, it's not a massive difference, but there it is before and there it is after. Again, not a massive difference, but a little bit smoother, just kind of accentuating that long exposure and taking advantage of the powerful mask that I was easily able to do down here on the dynamic contrast filter and then just pasting it to use it again for HDR look and then pasting it and inverting it to use it for noise reduction to use the opposite parts of the photo. And so I think that's looking pretty good. I'm going to add one more filter, and that's the sunshine filter. And it defaults to about 50, and I might give that a little bit more. You know, let's uh, let's call it 60. Let me turn this off. There's the photo before. And if you look, look at the sky here in the before photo, I really like how the sky looks. But I would like a little bit more warmth and things like that in the bottom of the photo. And when I turn this on... I think the warmth and things like that in the bottom of the photo have improved, but the sky is not as attractive. And this is where the AI quick mask comes in really handy. So I'm going to click on that. 
And then once you open the masking tool, you can go up here to AI Quick Mask. And there's basically two settings. As you look up here in mode, there's keep and then there's drop. So the first thing I'm gonna drop is the sky. So all you do is you can just, you know, drag your, uh, your mouse around the sky, which is basically telling on one, hey, whatever this filter is, sunshine in this case, I wanna drop it from the sky. I don't want it in the sky. But hey, I do want it in the bottom of the photo. So I'm gonna come over here and I'll just kind of go around like that. And then I'll just, you know, I'm just making like kind of this big, ugly green shape and red shape. All you're doing is you're telling on one, hey, the stuff on the top, don't want the sunshine filter there. Stuff on the bottom, I do want it there. So once you've done that with AI Quick Mask, just click on apply. And if you give it a second, as you can see, it's gonna render and then it's gonna show you the mask that is created based on what you've told it. And there you go. That's fantastic. I cannot do a better masking job if I spend an hour on this thing. Look at that. That is fantastic. I mean, it's perfectly along the edges of these buildings. Um, I mean, there's like an antenna up here and an antenna like over here some, uh, somewhere. But other than that, that's exactly what I wanted. And the truth is, you're not going to notice the sunshine filter in those little antenna anyway. This is exactly what I wanted to do. So if you're finished or happy, you can just say done. And then what you've now done is created, if you look at the view, you can see white reveals, black conceals. So this sunshine filter is being revealed in the bottom and not at all in the sky, which is exactly what I wanted. So let me turn that off. Now if you look at the bottom of the photo when I turn this back on, which is now, there you go, got a little bit brighter, a little bit warmer, and that's because of the sunshine filter. So that's a way that I use the different kinds of masking tools in combination to really achieve the look that I want. And now I've done all this customization, I might go back to develop and maybe do a little bit more uh, work over here. I might change the temperature a little bit, maybe change the tint, slight amount. In fact, I think I'm gonna pull the temperature back a little bit and maybe give it a little bit of boost in saturation or vibrance. And these are global adjustments because they're happening on the develop tab, which is applying across the entire image. That's what I mean by global. And so I've just come back after doing some basic stuff on develop, and then I went into effects, used four masks across four different filters, one of which I repeated, I did it here, and then uh, you know first on dynamic contrast, same one on HDR look, and then the inverted version of that on noise reduction, and then I went in with quick mask and did the sunshine filter, and that is quick and powerful and super easy. So let me get out of the masking view, and if I click on the before, you can see as I turn the preview off, that's what my photo looked like, and back on, there it is. Quick, easy, super simple, uh, painless to be honest, and incredibly accurate with the masking, which is what I love about On One. It just gives you amazing control over your photo without taking a whole lot of time to get the mask just right. It's intelligent. That perfect brush is darn near perfect, and that AI Quick Mask literally was almost perfect to the pixel. So what I love about it, I got the look that I wanted, which is a warmer, more vibrant sunset with more visibility and detail in the buildings and a little bit smoother look in the sky and water. Quick, easy, painless, fun, all that kind of stuff. That's on one for you. That's how those masking tools work and how I use them in combination to customize the look of my image. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Hope you're taking care of yourselves, hanging in there, that kind of stuff. And I'll be back soon with another video. So until then, have fun editing. I'll see you in the next one, my friends, and adios.